Former President Donald Trump at a rally in Wisconsin at this hour. He's just about 15 minutes into his speech. Um, some familiar refrain uh, from the last several years, the last decade or so. Uh, I want to bring in White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks right now. Um, <clears throat> just to quickly wrap this up, and, and you know, I, I don't want to sit here and fact check the things we just heard, but there is something important we should talk about. At the front of his speech, Mary Alice, he, he made the claim that he was under indictment because he dared to challenge the election. And, you know, he's under indictment if we go indictment by indictment for specific things. One of them is interfering with the election, trying to undermine the election, not to challenge it. He challenged it in 60 or so courtrooms and lost. Yeah, Phil, you're exactly right. He challenged it as uh, any candidate has the right to do in court, but he lost over and over in state after state, including with many Republican judges. He's indicted for what, of course, the special counsel says is illegally trying to interfere with the election results, pressuring a local government officials to try to overturn election results. Um, any knowledge he might have had of schemes for, for states to present alternate slate of electors um, in addition uh, or besides those electors that were uh, um, sort of fairly voted on by by the people. Um, you know, also, of course, he was not just indicted, but found guilty on those 34 felony counts for um, falsifying business records in New York. Of course, many Republicans are dismissive of that case, say that they think that case should have never been brought. But of course, it was a case that was brought and was heard before a jury. And he was, of course, found guilty. You know, Phil, it was also um, really it, another thing that stood out to me just in terms of fact checking. Uh, we heard him there incredibly dismissive from uh, about that latest announcement from the Department of Justice. Uh, we heard just last week the Department of Justice present pretty substantial evidence um, that Russia is once again trying to interfere in this election. Now, of course, the Department of Justice did not say one way or the other um, who or which candidate, which campaign Russia was uh, trying to help or hurt, but that broadly they were working in pretty, um, spending quite a lot of money, pretty sophisticated ways to try to spread misinformation, spread disinformation, kind of sow discord among Americans. American voters. Well, you heard Trump there incredibly dismissive of that. He basically called it all a hoax. And he wrongly said that the Department of Justice was not focused on Iran. But in fact, the Department of Justice, we know, Phil, also sure. laid out that they are very worried about Iran's election interference and cyber interference. And they've actually taken pretty extreme steps to try to crack down on Iran's work as well. So you're right. I mean, we, we know that, um, that that Trump's rallies often require a lot of fact checking on our part. He's still speaking. Uh, but one other thing I will just say, Phil, if you'll allow me, um, you know, he talked a lot at the beginning about violence in this country, but he did not say anything about gun violence or school shootings. And of course, that is on the minds of so many Americans this week after that tragedy in Georgia. Absolutely. And Mary Alice, I, I have a I've, I've, I've written down a couple of phrases um, and it's it's things that we've heard over the last 10 years. This is a quote. Trump is never wrong. Kim Jong Un is tough and smart and poor Russia. These are things he's been saying for a long time. So I'm curious. He's not talking about policy. Um, and, and, and his campaign has been criticizing Kamala Harris for not coming out and having a, a big interview on policy. But he's not talking policy either. He's going back to these, these old grievances um, that we've heard over the course of a decade. I'm wondering if you think that's going to be any kind of winning strategy for the very small group of undecided voters that both campaigns need in this election. Yeah, well, of course, we are just days away from the debate. And, you know, we've heard from Republicans. They want him to focus on policy. They want him to call out what they view are sort of flip-flops on policy from Vice President Kamala Harris. Of course, the risk in that, though, though, though that's probably a good strategy, right? Voters want to hear about policy. We hear from voters all the time, Phil, that they're tired of the personal insults. They want to hear what both these candidates will do for them. But, of course, the risky part of that is that if you if you go after someone else's policy proposals or ways that they flip-flopped on policy, you have to be prepared to talk about policy yourself. And you're right. I think that Trump in the last few weeks has had a hard time answering some of those questions about what he would do if he wins back a second term. And his stump speeches are often very light on policy, even talking about foreign policy. You know, he was talking about the war in Ukraine. He said broadly uh, that he would fix it, that the war would be over uh, without offering any specifics. I mean, the message with Trump is often, trust me, I will get it done. You know, it's interesting here, obviously, completely different debate sort of preparations going on here in Pittsburgh. 
Williamsburg. I'm right in front of the hotel where Vice President Kamala Harris has been holding these study sessions with her team. Uh, we had a little bit of an adventure this afternoon. She left the hotel and she actually uh, went down into another part of the city, a sort of an area that's known for local vendors, local shops. Uh, she stopped into a local spice shop. She was asked, are you ready to take on uh, President Trump? Obviously, this is her first debate. It's also the first time she will ever be in the same room with him, Phil. She said, yes, she is ready. Uh, she also took a question about that recent endorsement she got this weekend. Uh, former Vice President, Republican Vice President Dick Cheney saying that he planned to vote for her. Phil, she said to that reporter that she was honored to have his endorsement. Yeah, and it's a two but very she didn't different. Take our questions. <laughs> yeah, it's two very. <laughs> you can't win all the time. It's two very different yeah. ways, Mary Alice, of of prepping. And we've seen uh, Donald Trump do this in the past. He says he, he likes to have these po policy meetings where they just talk about things, and he gets the and and other candidates like Kamala Harris want to do really intense. It's two different ways to prepare for the same thing. We will see right here on ABC. Uh, how it works out. Uh, Mary Alice, thanks so much. Really do appreciate you coming in and, and sort of wrapping what we heard up. I appreciate that. September 10th, Vice President Harris and a former President Trump are set to debate for the first time right here on ABC News. Again, that is September 10th, 9 o'clock Eastern. You can watch it right here on ABC News Live, Hulu, Disney Plus, YouTube, anywhere else you stream your news.